So which camera is better at astrophotography, the Note 20 Ultra or the S20 Ultra? In this video, I talk about the best settings to use, which phone I thought was better at astrophotography, a few tips and tricks to making the process more efficient and getting the best results when you're out shooting, as well as how I shot and edited this photo. In case you haven't met before, my name is Rob. I'm a photographer from Sydney, Australia. Uh, previously, I made a video that's on the Samsung Australia YouTube channel about how to take astro photos on the S20 Ultra. Uh, that video, I'll link in the description below. In that video, I talk about end-to-end -end process of, of, sort of planning equipment, going out and shooting a uh, photo on the S20 Ultra. And so obviously when the Note 20 came out, I was curious, is this better or is this the same? So I went out and actually tested it. I'm curious, have you actually tried uh, shooting stars on your phone? Uh, what phone do you have? What settings did you try? What app did you use? Uh, leave a comment below and let me know because I'm curious I can learn from you and you can learn from me. Let me know if you had any success or failures and maybe I can help. So now the results. Well, I found they performed pretty much exactly the same. Uh, you'd expect that given the specs of the sensor being the same. I found that the S20 Ultra appeared to be a little bit brighter at the same settings when I edited them both on Lightroom Mobile um, or on the computer at home they looked exactly the same and the results were equally as good on both. So these phones use a bit of a trick, um, treating nine pixels as one, taking that 108 megapixel sort of sensor and then producing a 12 megapixel RAW file, which is why they're actually able to perform so well in low light. Now the conditions that I tested them in were actually pretty special. A friend and I had actually finished a photo shoot nearby the Warrumbungle National Park and I had that extra night free, so I decided to head over there and take advantage of the fact that it is a dark sky park, which means that you're not allowed to have any light pollution in the nearby. I've actually linked in the description below a link to all of the dark sky parks uh, globally, so you can check that out if you want to. So this was the perfect place to test these phones. It had clear sky, no clouds, and the Milky Way was um, straight above just after sunset and setting over the mountains at around 11 p.m. I went through... Uh, testing all the different settings, the different ISO ranges and different exposure uh, lengths, and also played around with the uh, focus as well. So the optimal settings that I found were uh, the shutter speed being 30 seconds, the ISO being 640, and the manual focus being two stops down from the infinity, so two little yellow bars down from the infinity focus. So just quickly stepping through the basics, we wanna make sure that we're in pro mode, we want to make sure we have raw photos enabled as in the saving option. And we want to enable the two second countdown timer to make sure we don't bump the camera when we're taking a photo. Alternatively, you can use the Invalometer app, which I will also link in the description. It's in the blog post as well, uh, where you can actually have the camera just constantly taking photos periodically. And that allows you to basically set and forget the phone. Uh, and you can also use that image sequence to create a time lapse if you wanted to. So I did promise some tips and tricks for taking photos when you are out there. Obviously, if you're taking 30 second exposure photos, you kind of don't want to wait 30 seconds to find out that you haven't lined up the phone correctly. So the real tip here is actually to sort of flip the settings around. So what you do is you put the ISO up to 3200 and you set the exposure maybe four seconds or less, just enough to actually show uh, sort of through all the noise what you're actually shooting. And you can use that, even though the image quality be really bad because of the ISO gain, um, you'll be able to see sort of where the Milky Way core is, maybe where the silhouette of a mountain is, etc. And that'll allow you to line the shot up quickly. And then you can just flip the settings back over, set the ISO back to 640, set the shutter speed back to 30 seconds, and uh, you can actually get then get the photo that you want. And the other tip actually is to preview the shots, not in the gallery app itself, but actually load some of those raw files into an editor, whether it's Lightroom Mobile, or whether it's Snapseed, to actually see uh, what information's in the raw file. The JPEG files that the phone generates um, from sort of that shooting mode uh, actually won't show you the level of detail that's actually there. So you might be a bit underwhelmed or not exactly sort of seeing all the information that's there. So the tip there is to actually take a couple of the shots after you start shooting, open them up inside Lightroom Mobile or Snapseed and actually see uh, how the images are going. That's what I did when I was out there. And finally, I wanted to go through that photo that I showed at the start. So the way that I took this flower photo was very simple, exactly the same settings that we're talking about now. We're shooting for 30 seconds. So after the phone counts down, two, one, it starts taking a photo for 30 seconds. In that time, if we take a torch or some sort of light and we actually paint uh, that light or shine that light in sort of the foreground, anywhere that that light touches that the camera can see will actually show up as bright in the camera. Now, obviously, you don't shine the light into the camera uh, phone lens directly. Um, and the more light you paint, obviously, the brighter it will be. So you have to be very, very careful not to, to overdo it. 
But if you experiment with um, sort of going quickly across the scene with the light or sort of flashing it up and then down or turning the light on and off, you can actually get some pretty amazing results. And you don't even need the stars to be there for this. This is just a light painting in general. But in this particular case, what it means is we end up getting in one exposure, the Milky Way in the sky and also uh, a foreground subject, which is the flowers. And I think it looks really, really pretty. Uh, and it took me a few goes to get the sort of amount of light right. I had to set the right level on the torch and then the right speed to flush through. And then obviously there's the editing side of it. Very simply, when you come to editing, you need to set the exposure for either the foreground or the sky. In this particular case, I'll set it for the foreground because it's already pretty close to what we want. And then I'll put a gradient from the top down over the sky to bring out the details in the Milky Way by bringing the exposure up. Then I can tweak the things that I like with the Milky Way shot. So for instance, add in some clarity, um, change the contrast and the curve, add a bit of an S there. Uh, and then I can actually go and add a radial sort of filter over the Milky Way core itself just to pop that central core out, feathering it just a little bit and maybe changing the white balance just to sneak a bit of color in there to give it that sort of alien astro feel that I like. So hopefully you got something valuable out of this video. If you did, uh, drop a like. If you're interested in more videos like this in the future, uh, feel free to subscribe. It's not always going to be about mobile photography. I've got a few other interests. I've got a few FPV drones here hanging on the wall that um, are desperate for me to make videos about them. Uh, and I've got some other videos coming out very soon, which I'm sure you will not want to miss. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Whew. I only had to record that one six times. Uh, coffee test. If I record this efficiently, the coffee will be warm, and if not, it will be cold. Ah, it's cold.